Hey everyone, I am still alive. Thanks for checking. <laughs> but I unfortunately couldn't quite manage to publish a video last month because I had been working on a few time sensitive commissions. But I am back this month with not one, but two episodes of Chinese history legendary figure painting where I cover two inspiring women from the same legendary family. So stay tuned for the second one because it's going to be coming out in just a couple of weeks. So today we're going to be talking about characters from the generals of the family Young. Um, it is a collection of stories, plays, and novels that cover the various victories, betrayals, and unwavering loyalty of one particularly impressive military family during the Imperial Song Dynasty. Uh, it covers about 100 years, several generations, um, dating from 950 to around 1050 AD. The story takes place during the political upheaval that followed the fall of the once glorious Tang dynasty. The empire has become fragmented into various states commanded by regional warlords who sought to legitimize themselves by uh, claiming that they were emperor. In one of these kingdoms called the Northern Han, there are two particularly interesting characters. One of them is Yang Ye, who is a talented and peerless general, and the second is Se Sai Hua, who is a daughter of an official. And the two of them are intending marriage, but at the last minute, Se Sai Hua's father decides to betroth her to some useless son of a more wealthy and prominent family. Discovering her father's plans, Se Sai Hua secretly sends a message to Yang Ye to come and challenge the other suitor for her hand. Faced with this predicament, Se Sai Hua's father has no choice but to allow the two men to battle it out. Yang Ye quickly gains the upper hand, but in one last act of desperation, Se Sai Hua's father actually goes to the aid of his favorite. In the process, Yang Ye successfully kills his opponent, however, injures his future father-in-law. Se Sai Hua, of course, being a dutiful daughter, um, is still loyal to her father despite his actions, and she becomes angry with Yang Ye for injuring him and therefore challenges Yang Ye to a duel. She's skilled in both martial arts and archery, and so Se Sai Hua is as formidable an opponent to, that Yang Ye has ever encountered with. As Yang Ye retreats to a temple, he finally is able to explain what happened to Se Sai Hua, and finally, mollified and accepting his explanation, Se Sai Hua forgives Yang Ye, and they marry then and there at the temple. In the intervening years, Se Sai Hua gives birth to seven sons and two daughters, and often accompanies her husband into battle. As their seven sons grow older, the boys too prove themselves on the battlefield. Together with their parents, the Yang family successfully stops several advances by the Song dynasty to take over the Northern Han. It is only when the Song emperor decides to bribe corrupt Northern Han officials to spread false rumors and sow distrust between their ruler and the Yang family that they are successfully able to overtake and secure a surrender from the Northern Han. So at this point, what's left for the Yang family? Even though they continue defending their capital against Song attacks, there's little they can do when they discover that their ruler has officially surrendered. However, the Song Emperor is so impressed by their bravery that he offers to raise the status of the Yang family by granting them an impressive mansion in the Song capital and giving them responsibility of defending the border of the now expanded Song Empire against the Liao Kingdom to the north. Gratified, the Yangs accept and pledge loyalty to the Song Dynasty. Now let's talk about the Liao Empire. It's basically a unified number of militant nomadic tribes. They have been having ready access to the wealthier central plains of China, and so their constant looting and raids and incursions had caused significant unrest in the area. The Yangs successfully repel Liao forces again and again. None of them, however, are as impressive as the Battle of Yinmen Pass along the north of the Great Wall. The Liao have brought an impressive 100,000 horsemen to this critical choke point. Now, Yang Ye meets up with Song General and the Emperor's father-in-law, Pan Mei, and his forces. Um, and Yang Ye decides to take his family and a few hundred cavalry through a difficult route west of the pass and arrive at the back of their enemy forces. Thus, with Pan Mei to the south and Yang Ye to the north, the Song are able to surround their enemy. 
and they are able to capture or kill several critical Liao leaders and secure countless horses and military supplies for the Song army themselves. This decisive battle solidifies the Yangs as invincible to their enemy, but unfortunately it also secures the Yangs' um, family significant jealousy from other Song border generals and officials like Pan Mei himself. So if you haven't guessed already, Pan Mei is our bad guy today. Despite making several attempts to kill off the Yang family, Pan Mei is thwarted in all of his attempts. Yang Ye and his sons are receiving promotion after promotion through the unshakable trust of the Song Emperor. So Pan Mei has to get a little more creative in setting up the Yang family's destruction. An opportunity presented itself when the Song Emperor decided to embark on a large-scale campaign against the Liao to take over the 16 prefectures, which is a historical region in northern China that includes present-day Beijing. Despite meeting with initial success in capturing four of the 16 prefectures, uh, the Liao army actually was able to repel Song's eastern forces and was on a swift march westward to meet up with Pan and Yang. Pan and Yang receive orders to protect civilians from the four conquered prefectures and retreat back into Song territory where they would be more secure. Yang Yi agrees to this strategic retreat, but Pan, along with some of his military cronies, goad Yang Yi by saying that he was a coward and that he wasn't really invincible against the uh, Liao forces, claiming that he was running away. They demand that if he were truly brave, Yang Ye would take his men and meet up with the enemy forces head on. Yang Ye again claims that this would be a false move, but with his honor basically on the line, he agrees to meet up with the Liao, but asks that Pan and his men uh, wait for him at the end of a valley should his forces be um, compelled to retreat, at least they would have some sort of backup waiting for them. Pan agrees to this plan, but of course, what do you think happens? Liao forces are somehow made aware of Yang Ye's movements and are able to set up an ambush. After a long drawn out battle, Yang Ye and his men are forced to retreat and they decide to move into the valley and uh, towards the agreed upon rendezvous point with Pan and his men. But once they get there, they discover that no allies are waiting to bail them out. Pan has already left. And one of Yang Ye's son is killed in battle, and Yang himself is captured alive. But he refuses food for three days and dies shortly from infections and wounds. According to legend, the trap had resulted in the loss of four sons of the Yang family. Of the three surviving sons, one of them gives up the military life and decides to become a monk. Another one is captured by Liao and is forced to marry into that enemy family and become a son-in-law. And so there's really only one son, the sixth son, who remains to take up the banner for Song. The matriarch and now widow, She Sai Hua, is able to secure the testimony of her surviving son of Pan Mei's betrayal, and also enlists the help of the emperor's nephew to secure an honest judge who was unlikely to be bribed or intimidated by the Pan family. In the stories, she successfully prosecutes him in imperial court, and Pan Mei's character is executed. Convinced of her trustworthiness and sound judgment, and also moved by the loyalty of the Yang family, the Song Emperor makes Se Sai Hua his new commander-in-chief and awards her with a dragon head staff as a symbol representing the emperor. Se Sai Hua allegedly lives to be more than 100 years old and continued this to serve the emperor faithfully up until her death. She is especially known to have married strong military women to her sons and grandsons so that even when all of the men of the Yang family had perished, the women of the Yang family continued their legacy to fight for the Song dynasty in their place. In reality, it's true that Pan Mei was exposed, but he was only demoted three ranks. Nevertheless, Yang Ye's legacy as a hero remained intact as his surviving son and grandsons continued to defend the Song from foreign military powers. Their story inspired not just those collected in the generals of the family Young, but also characters from the famed novel Water Margin, 30 some odd films, TV series, operas, and video games. For this portrait of Se Sai Hua, I relied on the reference photo of a Chinese American author named Maxine Han Kingston, who epitomizes the face of an incredibly strong, wise, modern voice that talks of things that many wouldn't dare to mention. 
It brings to mind Se Sai Hua's legendary pursuit for justice in a male-dominated court against a leader in a male-dominated army. So it was a pleasure to bring these two characters from different times together in my painting. So thanks for hanging in there with me and don't forget to stay tuned for the second installment this month where I cover another legendary and inspiring woman from the same family. Don't forget to subscribe and leave me a comment to let me know what you think or if you have any other ideas for future episodes. Thanks again.